Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I got 30 cards back from PSA. This was a value bulk at, I think, $18 US per card. Um, one of the cards in this order, I had to pay a 200 and something dollar upcharge on. Um, and that Stay tuned to the end, I'll show that one. But yeah, that may or may not have been because uh, I put like a $5,000 card in this order. Hoping to slip it by PSA, but it seems like they're getting better at like uh, properly upcharging rare hockey cards. So um, yeah, I ended up having two cards not get graded. Here's a Ryan O'Reilly PMG green. I sent a ton of PMGs in this order. They're basically all min sized cards, but PSA just like graded all of them and then randomly put these two as the minimum size. So, okay, I guess these ones are slightly shorter than all the other ones, but yeah, this whole set, I don't know, they, they gotta just start grading all of these because it's clear these cards aren't getting trimmed by anybody. Like, no one would care enough to trim these. And uh, they're just slightly cut short. So PSA should adjust for that. It's kind of a waste of time having to send in multiple cards. Um, I've seen multiple examples of those getting sent in, getting min size, and then you send them in again and then they get graded. So it's really just a waste of time. Uh, but yeah, here's a Braden Point PMG Green. Here's a Brent Burns PMG Green. Pretty sick cards here, these uh, 2020 PMGs. I did decide, unfortunately, that I think I can't really build this set. Um, yeah, I, ju I just came to the realization that I'm too poor to be a set collector. So I had like 70% of the set, mostly PMG greens, and a, even like four or five of the golds. But yeah, I was just doing the math, and it's like <laughs> it, it's like a 200 card set. So if on average, if it was like $75 per card, that's like, what, $15,000 uh, for like just a bunch of cards that I don't really care about. But I just like the idea of having the full set. It's like the OCD in me. So yeah, I, I've decided no more set collecting because I'm too poor. But hopefully in the future, when I'm like wealthier, I'll just become a set collector because that would be awesome. So here's a dry sidle. This one was for my set, but yeah, now I think I'm just gonna end up selling a lot of these obviously keeping the uh, Pedersen the McDavid like the guys I PC but I just love the way this set looks like I, I don't know this Kopitar card like just looks so nice to me but yeah it was, especially with grading because I have to have my whole set graded so even just grading fees alone it's like 20 times 200 that's a lot of money already <laughs> just in grading fees uh, here's a Ryan O'Reilly this is what I was talking about I sent this in already and it came back min sized and now I sent it in again and it came back graded. So PSA, I don't know why they don't have like a better system. Like clearly they've seen enough of these cards now where they, they should see the pattern. Like a lot of these, their marking is minimum sized. So just put like a note on the set that it's whatever, it's a short, like the, the cards are just on average, they're a bit shorter. Um, maybe they have some like some issues with that because then people could trim ones. I don't know, but Either way, it's kind of dumb. I have to send these in multiple times. So, yeah, there's the Ryan O'Reilly. Here's a Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, and if they were, if each of these cards was like $75, that's like, that would be like 15 k for the full set. And like 15 k I could buy a McDavid Exclusives Young Guns. And as much as I love owning sets, I feel like I'd much rather just have a McDavid Exclusive Young Guns in my PC. So, it just makes sense to... Uh, to not be a set collector, even though it's completely awesome to collect sets. Uh, here's a Panarin. And a few of the cards in this set I spent like hundreds of dollars on. Like uh, a couple of them I spent like over thousands of dollars on actually for some of the golds. But yeah, it's just too much money tied up. So I'm going to be sadly selling some of these. Here's Jonathan Taves. I remember back in 2014, there used to be real narratives about Taves being a better player than Crosby because, uh, you know, Taves, oh, he's a leader, he's, he won cups, blah, blah, blah. Dumbest narrative in all of sports. So, so brain dead. If you thought Taves was ever, even on the uh, remotely close level of Cros as Crosby, you just did not know Puck. Sorry to tell you. Uh, but that was a true narrative. You can look up on the internet, Google it. There was like old threads, people debating about it. And uh, yeah, I think it's one of the dumbest arguments and the people who are trying to say McDavid hasn't passed Crosby are trying to use the same arguments uh, like, oh, no matter how much better McDavid is individually, uh, he can't pass him because 
team success, and that argument is going to age just as badly as the Taves versus Crosby. Just letting you guys know that right now. Here's a Henrik Sedin Future Watch Auto, uh, numbered out of 10. Obviously not like a real Future Watch, it's like a legend set. This would be, if this was a real card, like from year 2000, this would be like a grail card for me. But as it is, it's a pretty cool card. Not actually 100% sure if I'm going to keep this. I bought it just because I do collect uh, Canuck Future Watches. But yeah, now I'm also questioning whether I should collect that as well because it's kind of annoying to collect something that every single year I need like four or five more cards and a lot of them are like random prospects that I don't really care about so yeah we'll see this is a very nice looking card though I like the rainbow foil on it with the gold auto looks awesome here's Hedman Patrick Kane that Hedman card by the way this is like his first ever PMG on the all-star set so yeah i paid like over 100 bucks for this i think um but that's a really cool card here's a kane all-star mark stone mr ltir here um he gets to go on like play golf in the middle of the seasons and then be magically perfectly healthy right before the playoffs every year pretty sweet that would be quite an awesome life just be like a multi-millionaire, just play golf, win cups. That'd be awesome. Um, Doug Waite, three-color game jersey. Seven's pretty good grade on that one. I get really bad grades on these. Like, I, uh, have I got any nines? I guess I've gotten a few PSA nines on these, but they always look good to me, and then PSA always gives them like seven, eight, or a six. Here's a Pedersen High Gloss. What year would that be for him? Like fourth year card or something? But yeah, not not my favorite of his like base cards. The photo looks a little bit weird there with him like hunched over. He almost he looks like really short. He looks like Connor Garland or something with that photo. But yeah, high gloss, rarest parallel of uh, this year, 2013 and onwards. There's outburst gold one of one. Okay, this is a really cool one that I got for my PC a few months ago. I, I don't know what was up with that, but this card could not focus properly. But yeah, this is the 2001 Topps Chrome Black Refractor Henrik Sedin, numbered, I think it's out of 100. Or no, this out of 50, actually. Yeah, numbered to 50, so this is the rarest parallel of 2001 Topps Chrome. To me, that's the best year of NHL Topps Chrome. This has the Pavel Datsuk rookie in it, the, the Black Refractor Datsuk. That's like such a sick card. Um, but yeah, incredible card. It just makes me sad. Why wasn't there super fractors? Like, can you imagine this card, a one of one super fractor of a Henrik Sedin? Like, this is a year two card for the Sedins, so this is almost a rookie card. Um, and I think they, they have a top scrum rookie, but they didn't have parallels on that year, so I don't really care about those ones. But yeah, sick card here. I bought the Nazland as well, and I just need to get the Daniel Sedin. But um, yeah, just a cool miscellaneous uh, Vancouver PC card. All right, now we're getting into the Luongo High Glosses. Um, there's a few of these in this order. This is the 2011, so this is the year after they went to the Cup Finals. So they have a photo of him in the Cup Finals there, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, like I was pr pretty salty about the uh, how that series went and everything, but I guess I'm nostalgic for it, um, even though they lost. Uh, yeah, I mean it was it was definitely like the peak of uh, my Canuck fandom, for sure. Like, that whole season, it just would have been so much better had they'd won the Cup that year. But either way, Luongo, one of my absolute favorite players ever. And uh, yeah, I just think these UD high glosses are cool to collect for him because it, like, just kind of uh, keeps track of, like, the little the era where he was a Canuck for me. Like, I remember all the different masks and stuff that he had. Um, yeah, so one of my more nostalgic uh, eras and uh, one of my favorite players so yeah there's the Luongo the high glosses are the rarest there wasn't like one of ones now speaking of the high glosses this is like an insanely sick card in my opinion 2006 Luongo high gloss PSA 10 forget the grade that's that's really cool I didn't think this I mean I didn't really look at these cards that close because I didn't care what they would grade but a 10 is just like really a bonus on this 
But this is 06, so this is first year Luongo, right after they traded Bertuzzi for him. He played one year with this uh, Orca jersey. Uh, kind of cool, like he played in this jersey, Burray played in this jersey, the Sedins played in this jersey, Naslin's like whole prime was in that jersey. So a lot of like the greats of the Canuck era did play in that jersey, not uh, Pedersen and Hughes, but I kind of hope they'll bring this back as like a, a alternate, like a throwback one, because I really liked the, the maroon and the, the dark blue, like the whole color scheme I thought was awesome. But yeah, first year Luongo is a Canuck. Now get this, this card is the one of 10. So I actually don't really care about jersey numbers, but I do care about first prints. So this is like the ultimate double dip here. We got the jersey number and the first print. So it's just, it's just pure goodness here. There's nothing not to like about that. And it's a PSA 10. So to me, like this is one of the most important upper deck cards ever for a Vancouver Canuck player, like Luongo, Probably the goat of the Canucks. Um, yeah, I mean, he's by far the best goalie. I mean, it's Burray or Luongo, basically, until Quinn Hughes takes the reign from them, probably in, like, the next couple seasons. But, um, yeah, as of now, it's one of the most important uh, Vancouver Canuck upper deck cards ever issued. So, yeah, I just think that's just super awesome card. All right, more high glosses. This one is 09. So that was like what, third year or something, 06, 07, 08, oh, I guess fourth year. Let's see, should have three years of Canucks on the back if it is, yeah. So fourth season as a Canuck, this one he's wearing, probably my favorite mask for any Canuck. Actually, no, forget about that because this is with the C on it. I honestly forgot about that. I probably blocked it out, like the fact that they made Luongo the captain for like, <laughs> that was just so cringe. I can't believe they did that. I hated that at the time. I was like, oh, that's just weird. Like, it's just awkward. But yeah, this is the high gloss. Um, yeah, number to 10. Some of these, they didn't call high gloss. They called like UD Spectrum. I think they already, yeah, they did that for uh, for this one. I forgot to point that out. It's kind of weird, but that's like what it says on the card. UD Exclusive Spectrum out of 10. So yeah, they weren't always consistent with like the, the parallel and the naming and stuff. But um, yeah. There's the 09, awesome card besides the uh, C on his mask. All right, here's a Pedersen um, rookie trilogy parallel number 299. This one was for a set I was attempting of getting all Pedersen's rarest true rookies, but I'm kind of questioning that set now too because it's just a lot of cards I don't care about that I have to buy if I want to complete it. But I don't mind the idea of it because at least it does have like a checklist like there's an end goal and uh yeah it's like Pedersen's like one of my favorite players so don't mind having extra cards of him but this is his rarest parallel of his true rookie which is basically what I'm trying to get in that uh that set so um yeah pretty cool it's a nice looking card trilogy is obviously a bit of a random set it's not really an important card or anything all right here is uh I don't know Kind of a, a card that I actually like for some reason. Um, even though Yulevi is like the biggest bust in uh, the franchise. I just, I don't know. I remember I just I played so many franchise modes in EA where this guy became like a top two defenseman. Like he's probably multiple simulations where he was like a Hall of Famer. But in reality he like was out of shape in, bat, in uh, training camp and like didn't even... I mean, he played some games, but yeah, he he didn't really come close to becoming a real NHLer. But uh, yeah, I like the way the Black Future Watches look. It's one of the main cards I want for Pedersen still, is this Black Future Watch. See, I have the inscription one up there. But um, yeah, the black and gold and the hollow foil, I mean, that's just such a good combination. Um, but yeah, I graded this, so if I do end up selling this now, I definitely just lit 20 bucks on fire, because guarantee anyone buying this card none of them care about it being graded that's just for me because i was planning to keep it but yeah questioning whether to collect all this random crap um here's a mcdavid metal universe uh red it's actually got a nine cool um that's the uh all-star one which to me I, I don't really care too much about this card i, I love the base card to 97 the all-star variations the only ones i like really are the guys who didn't have a base card so I like I like that Victor Hedman one since he didn't have one on the regular set 
but yeah the all-star ones yeah the jerseys are kind of ugly and just don't uh don't really care for that card too much here's a really cool another important upper deck numbered card but this time pavel Bure instead of uh, luongo um this is the first ever year of exclusives it's the first ever year of numbered flagship parallels for hockey so to me this is like quite an important set and like uh there's a lot of important players in this set wayne gretzky has a card his last year as a playing uh nhler um so like that's pretty amazing um there's two parallels to this one of them's out of a hundred which is uh this one and the other one is numbered out of one so there's a one of one and an out of a hundred, and even just the out of a hundreds are pretty tough to come across. I've only seen, I mean, I've only saw this card for sale one time so far, and I've been looking for it for a few years. So yeah, cool picture there. Burry's like on a breakaway against what, Chris Osgood, I guess. Um, yeah, just classic Burry, the Russian rocket on a breakaway. I, I thought the, the photography is pretty cool. But um, yeah, I would love to, to see the one of one if that card exists. That would be like a grail beret to try to hunt down. But um, yeah, this one, I think this is uh, kind of fits in with some of my other cards I have, like uh, Pedersen High Gloss. It's, that's his first year upper deck card. Beret, this is his first year upper deck card. Um, the Luongo that I showed you. So a lot of my favorite Canucks getting their first year upper deck and uh, trying to get the lowest numbered parallel of it. So yeah, there's the beret. Okay, this card is sick. This this was a sick hit in this order. I was actually pretty surprised when I saw this. Um, we had the 1998 Finest Pavel Bury Refractor, the non-protected variation. So basically, there's this is a parallel. It's just a weird thing that they did where they had the base refractor. I think it was like 1 in 12 packs or something were the odds. That one had the uh, peel crap on it. And then the only other difference is the back of it is not shiny. It's just like a standard back. And then they had the non-protected or the no protectors refractors. And these were numbered up or not numbered. They're uh, one in 24 packs. So two times as rare. And I like that, honestly, that um, like they, they made the superior parallel, the one that didn't have the peel on it. They were like trying to send a hint there, like, uh, yeah, take the, the peel off, guys. Like, the card's not supposed to have it. So they made the superior card not have peel, which uh, I just think was uh, awesome. But, um, yeah, and I love the photo on this one. I love the design. I thought this was going to get, like, a PSA 9 for sure. I was, like, actually, like, worried about it, it getting an 8 because I thought the surface didn't look that great to me. It looked, like, kind of cloudy. It wasn't, like, that clean. And I had another copy of this that was, like, absolutely pristine. Not this one though, the peeled one, where I peeled it off and the surface was so perfect on that one and that one got a PSA 9. So I thought this was getting a 9 all day or like an 8. Uh, so I, I don't know, the 10 was like very surprising grade, but um, it, it is like a really clean looking card. You can't really, there wasn't scratches or anything. It just, the surface didn't look that perfect to me. Um, so yeah, this is one of the rarest Burry refractors out there, I think. And another cool thing with this, um, they, they had this in the order, um, just Pavel Burry Refractor, and I did like the, the contact thing where you can like tell them if they messed up on, uh, after they received the cards, and I was, I told them like, this is not the normal refractor, this is the no P, or the uh, no protector refractor, has different pack odds, it's on the checklist, it's not like, you know, they should definitely be labeling it differently, um, and I looked at the PSA pop report, and none of these cards had been uh, labeled as the non-protector ones so then I realized like oh they probably just always been grading all of these just as refractor so I didn't really expect them to change it I thought they'd just get back to me and be like have some lame excuse like oh no we we just call them all the same or something but yeah they actually corrected this and called it the the proper parallel name non-protected refractor I'll show you the difference here um, identical looking so you can't really can't really blame PSA but yeah it would have it would, would have just came back like this had I had not contacted them. So now I believe I have the only one on the pop report labeled like that. And hopefully going forward, now that they have that information, um, if you send one of these in, it should get labeled correctly. But yeah, you can see on the back, it's clearly a different card. So uh, yeah, this is one of uh, the last like berets I really wanted and to get a PSA 10, just completely awesome. So um, pretty sick card.
All right, next we got Game Jersey Jerome McGinley. Bought this one a few months ago. Um, paid a lot for it. We'll see if I decide to sell these these uh, the Game Jersey sets, uh, which I'm probably going to do in the next few months. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll see if I get back what I paid because I paid heavy prices for these. I was paying like collector prices, not like buying it to flip type of prices. But uh, yeah, the, the patch on this one or swatch or whatever. It's just, that has to be so rare. Like, that's like as good as it gets for this card. So, yeah, pretty sick card there. All right, last three cards. These are all my favorites from the order. I guess actually the Beret, I, that was also one of my favorites. But another Beret, which is my favorite here, is the UD Game Jersey with the uh, the sick dual swatch. This one got a PSA 7, which i th pretty sure I thought this would get an 8 or a 7. I think that the corner was slightly imperfect. Oh yeah, you can see the little corner issue. It actually looks worse, like they kind of uh, handled it wrong, but whatever. Um, yeah, this one I, is just was more about the uh, the swatch. Wasn't too bothered by the grade, but I, I had another copy that I think got like a PSA 5, and it had a worse swatch, so I'll take a 7 all day. No issue with that. So, yeah, uh, this card and then that Burry Refractor, like, man, I feel like my Burry collection is, it's, like, so close to perfect. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm almost, like, completely uh, satisfied with it where I don't need to add any other cards or do any upgrades or anything. So, yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite cards for sure. Or really the only, like, non-whale jersey Burry that I feel like I have to own is this one. So... Um, yeah, I do like the skate jersey too. It's like obviously more of like more of like Burry's iconic uh, plays and career was known in this jersey, not the Orca one. I just happen to like the Orca jersey a lot. So, but yeah, that's that's a really sick card. All right, more Luongo. We got the Gold Prism, twenty thirteen absolutely stunning set the shine the gold like hollow foil rainbow shine on these is just so so nice and this one pulled the PSA 10 this was uh there wasn't many cards in this order I was expecting a 10 on this was probably one of the few where it just looked like nothing was wrong with it so um yeah maybe that's why I got some decent grades like the beret getting the, the PSA 10 is a lot of the cards in this order just had no chance at 10s which I like orders like that because then the grader just like starts to feel bad for you after giving you all these eights and sevens and nines on all these like random PMGs and stuff. And then they see a refractor with no scratches on it. They're not going to be like really sticky about it. I feel like they're just happy to give you the 10. But who really knows the psychology of the graders? I'm obviously just speculating. But uh, yeah, this is a sick card. So there is a black one of one of this, which would be like my ultimate favorite Luongo card if I could ever get that. But if not... PSA 10 gold that will do just fine so um yeah as far as Panini Prisms they had uh they had 2012 but those ones were like inserted in uh Panini Anthology and there were like there was like several sets in that same product so to me that was like kind of like uh not like a true gold it was like an insert whereas 2013 was actually just a dedicated set Panini Prism where these were the uh, base cards so to me, Luongo doesn't even have a 2012 gold, but even if he did, I like these 2013 golds a lot more uh, just because they're true golds, number to the base. So yeah, that's that's uh, my favorite uh, possible Luongo gold card. So really sick one. All right, and last, definitely not least, the $200 upcharge card, the Connor McDavid Golden Treasures 1 of 1 from 2022. And this happens to be the world's only PSA 10 of a true one of one, like super fractor uh, for Connor McDavid. Um, as far as, yeah, like there's, there's probably some allure ones and some other like retro super fractory design cards, but platinum is like the main set for chrome cards with uh, hockey. So to me, this is like the ones to get the uh the true number to the base out of uh, opg platinum so um yeah there's been a few of these graded by psa um like the previous year i think got like a psa 8 but i looked through the pop report and this is the only psa 10 and just the card itself even without the grade scarcity there's only eight 
cards that would fit the criteria of this being the true OPG Platinum card. So he has like the 2015, 2016, 17, 18. He has one for every season. So it's quite a tough card to get. Like there's just not a lot of cards out there with those attributes. Um, probably by the end of his career, there will be no more than 20. Uh, maybe somewhere in the low 20s at best. So yeah, this is just always going to be, um, to me, a really important parallel and just like a uh, quite a scarce card. Because if you think about it, he has like, what, 50 rookie limited logos? He has 99 rookie patch autos out of the cup? Like, yeah, he'll have 20 of this card at best. Like, probably less than 20 even. So, um, yeah, that's just such a an important card in the hobby. One of one, Super Fractors. Like, I think the, the second year LeBron James, uh, the 2004, which I guess was his first one of one because the, uh, the first year he didn't have a Super Fractor. But yeah, that card sold for like 700k or something. So I think cards like like this just have a ton of upside. So yeah, I was super happy to, to be able to get one of these. Um, and then this actual year, I think, happens to just have one of the best designs in, in Platinum. Just super intricate and really like, yeah, just nice symmetrical design. So really like the design on it. And the other thing I like is that this is from 2022, which happens to be the most dominant season that he's ever played. And we'll see what he does in the next few years. Like, he'll probably have his prime uh, abilities until he's, like, 30 or 31. So it's, like, another three or four years of, like, prime McDavid, barring no injuries or anything. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be tough to top what he did in 2022 because he led the league in goals and assists which has only ever been done by the literal GOAT forwards, uh, Gretzky, Lemieux, Gordie Howe. Um, if you look at leading the league in goals and assists, it's like an impossible thing to do because it's two stats that are like negatively correlating with each other. So it's like, yeah, I mean, other players like Crosby never came remotely close to doing that. So it's like a true mark of like uh, individual dominance uh, to be able to do that. So he is the fourth player in history to do that that season, and he should have became the first player to ever become a two-time unanimous MVP winner. He ended up getting 499 out of the 500 MVP votes that year, with the one person who didn't vote him MVP being a Pittsburgh Penguins beat writer. So I'm sure there was no bias there. I'm sure the guy wasn't just butthurt over, you know, McDavid doing something that Crosby wasn't capable of doing sure there was no bias at all in that vote but yeah he voted McDavid fifth in MVP that year and I think he voted like Pasternak first or just some random homer vote so um yeah McDavid literally should be the only two-time unanimous MVP had that guy not like sabotaged his vote so Gretzky was only unanimous MVP once um and I think Gretzky and McDavid like they might be the only players who ever even had 99% of the MVP votes um, multiple times. I'd have to look into that more, but yeah, pretty, uh, it was a h historic year that McDavid had that year. So um, to me, having the, the card from that year is just extra cool. But yeah, that's the last card in the order. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.